Demi's tagline here is helping founders attract and convert more clients. Founder at, is it Lauren? Lauren? Lauren. Lauren Social. Marketer five plus years with the dragon emoji. I love that dragon. Your color scheme is unlike anything I've ever seen before. Why the lime green or the crazy looking green? It's awesome. <laughs> well, it's like the only color that I like, the snow neutral. So you'll, if you like <laughs> see in real life, I only ever wear like neutrals, black, gray, um, nude. That's like my whole personality. But the only other, like if I was to buy a Lamborghini, it would be that color. And so when I launched Lauren Social, I was like, I can't just have it like black and white. It's just boring. I was like, I'm going to use the only other color I like on the planet. And everybody come to me and said, like, it stands out. Like, as soon as I changed my profile picture, I had so many DMs. Like, oh, my God, I love your new branding. Before I'd even told anybody that I had new branding. So, yeah, it works really well. Fantastic. You know what? I'm going to screen share, too, because people need to see this color. Like I said, I don't think I've seen that shade anywhere before. People do the purples, the pinks, kind of the fluorescence, right? But they don't they don't touch the green. Green is like the danger zone. I love it. And green is my favorite color. So I uh I appreciate a, a good shade of green. Profile optimization, one-on-one -on -one coaching courses, helping founders attract and convert more clients. Join the become unignorable weekly email list that's awesome so have you well i know we were discussing this earlier why linkedin for you why was linkedin the platform of choice when you said you know i'm gonna grow my brand business i'm gonna just position myself on one platform why linkedin so i had my arm twisted <laughs> by my business partners. So I was initially gonna grow on Instagram. Like I I know pretty much all the major social channels like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, so I was gonna do it on Instagram. And then he was on LinkedIn and started bringing in so many leads like so quickly. And I thought it was like a job searching platform. I never even considered it as like a social media platform. So, after seeing his results and like four months of him saying you need to get on LinkedIn, blah blah blah, I went on there, and now I'm I live there. <laughs> like, I'm surprised they haven't started charging me rent. <laughs> that's actually a good that's a good pivot question. So do you act do you pay for LinkedIn Premium? I don't. I never have. I don't see any benefit in it. Do you? I the only reason I pay for Premium is because they locked me out of my account. <laughs> oh googled um they were like yeah if you've got premium you can like speak to the the customer service so hmm. i got premium just so i could be like can i have my account back please but that didn't even work and like <laughs> i just canceled it i do use um sales navigator now for leads but i was basically coerced into getting premium just to give my account back you know i did when i was looking for a job god what was this it was yes during covid 20 yeah late 2020 i signed up for the i don't even know the name of the packages anymore but it was like linkedin's you know you're a candidate looking for a job package right it was like 70 bucks a month like who who without a job is spending 70 bucks a month to maybe like or it was maybe five or ten in mails or outgoing you know messages you could send it's like, that's not going to get me a damn job <laughs> Uh, ever since then, I, I have not given LinkedIn a dollar of mine, but, you know, having seen what's going on with Twitter and what Elon's doing with like the pay for verification and the blue check marks and all that stuff, I just have a, a strange hunch. That's probably the way things are going for social media. It's no longer going to be as free as it has been. Yeah, I think so too. And like people get so et up, but when like, social platforms start charging for things because we're so used to having it for free but when you think about it all these platforms are businesses so if they want to make more money from their business like that's why i don't i never really complain like when they bring out like verifications and stuff like that i'm like we've had this for free for like over yeah. 10 <laughs> yeah and i think the other side of it is a lot of businesses now are not 
like doing paid advertising they're focusing more on organic social like that's become more of a thing than paid advertising was like five ten years ago so if they're not getting as much money in ads like i don't know if they i haven't done that research but if they're not they have to make their money somehow yeah so yeah, and especially in sort of a down i mean i don't know what the economy is like over there but here in the united states it's been shite for the last few years and it's month the cost of money is so expensive that businesses are not over leveraging themselves so they're cutting out a lot of the digital spending i think and uh if they're spending less in ads elsewhere well then linkedin's gotta like you said make up for it somewhere else but speaking of so speaking of paid ads versus organic yeah this is you're like the perfect segue for me. Thank you. You're just teeing it up for me today. So do you run any paid ads anywhere? And are you entirely organic in terms of like lead gen funnels, all that good stuff? So my lead gen for my business is completely organic. Um, but we, so my co-run business, SNMA with Luke, that is specifically for paid advertising for financial companies. So we run... Um, ads and funnels for all their accounts but we've never had to do it for our own like SNMA we grew SNMA so quickly because we found a gap in the market and like we just spread like wildfire like we were doing something that no other business was doing um for like way cheaper than what these companies were paying for from their like other lead providers so it, it just grew like that that grew faster than we ever thought it was going to grow and then I launched Lauren Social in I think it was August, but this year is like I have no idea what's going on this year. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, that's that's all organic because I teach organic like lead generation primarily via LinkedIn, but for other platforms as well. So I like to practice like and keep practicing on my own business because otherwise I feel like I'd lose touch with if I was just gaining clients from ads and then teaching organic, I'd lose touch with what's going on in the organic space. So yeah, like I, I like to just do it myself. So I stay on the ball. That's a good strategy. Yeah, I've debated um I've debated dipping my toes into some paid ads lately, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Not sure yet. I got too many irons in the fire at this point. I just need to settle my ass down and <laughs> concentrate on well, a couple of really key things. As, speaking of S N M A, what's that stand for? super niche marketing agency so luke came up with a name um at the very beginning of like january last year and originally he so snma was like his baby like we co-ran it but that's and that's kind of like what pushed me to like launch lauren social i was like i want kind of on my own baby but yeah he named it um he came up with the original concept and then we were going to just do marketing for businesses and we kind of ended up in the lead gen game not by accident but yeah, that that became like the focus of SNMA, which wasn't the original plan. But we just found this way that works so well that it just kind of like that's all we needed to do in our business. That's awesome. So, I mean, everyone has their own favorite child. <laughs> which one do you like more? Which brand or business do you like more? Which bit? Uh, I have to. <laughs> my child. I have to like SNMA is unbelievable like i love i love like i love co-running it with him and like we've done incredible things at snma in a really really short time but loran social i've built on my own like that has been like my baby like my sort of goals that i've done by myself so i think because it's all been done by me i've got more of a emotional attachment to loran social yep. <laughs> <Love them both. laughs> but you don't have to pick right everyone's got their favorite kid but you don't have to publicly say it right yeah maybe, maybe we'll edit that out so luke doesn't see it yeah i know he probably won't watch this to be fair <laughs> yeah no time he literally bless his heart he hasn't got time <laughs> so i have um one of my favorite posts of yours do you mind if i share it no go for it go for it all right let's see here. so let me get my post sharing cool this oh, one yeah what's we'll it say it's like showing really small on my phone. all right let me see here better maybe a little bit oh you're on your phone 
Yeah, it's I'm, the the one yeah. where you have the collage of all your past God. business ventures growing up in the industry. I freaking love this post. The world needs more of this. Where did you come up with the idea for this? And how did you scrape together all these fantastic pictures? <laughs> um, the idea, I wish I could remember, but it wasn't even that long ago I posted it. I, it. My ideas usually come from either something will happen in my life or someone will say something or a client will say something. And I'll think that's a really good idea for a post and I'll put it in my notes. Um, that's where like the majority of my content ideas come from. So it was probably, I either saw a post about someone talking about their previous jobs or I had a conversation, which made me think like, I should really be like open about this because I think a lot of new business owners, especially they come onto like platforms like LinkedIn and they see everybody doing so well and like everybody's sharing their wins and they're like, yeah, I made like 10 K in my first two months. But the fact of like behind that story is usually five to ten years of trying different things that didn't work and then you use all those lessons to create the one thing that does so it seems quick but it's not and like people land and probably think oh my god she's grown so quickly since like april but i've been teaching myself and like doing courses and learning marketing for like five plus years so that was why that was why i posted that one yeah it's fantastic and there's no i mean there's no, you know, how I X with Z with Y, you know, all those crazy hook templates and everything. It's just, nope, my first business, I was selling hand-drawn art when I was sick, six. And then the, <laughs> the humor, I love all of this. And I mean, it, when you go through the entire post, it's almost something that every single aspiring entrepreneur or entrepreneur can relate to. Every single person can relate to this post. And so it made me think of, of my own sort of first business outside of like the lemonade stands that we all did when we were kids, you know, driving by, here's a drink, you know, whatever, here's a quarter or whatever. I used to, and I guess this relates to my writing, but I used to record rap songs in my room. There was a radio station that would play the top five at nine or power nine at nine or something like that. And my bedtime was 9 p.m. in like third or fourth grade. And I had my first little jukebox and I would stay up and I'd turn the volume down really low so my parents couldn't hear it. And I would record every one of the rap songs. And then I'd study the lyrics, I'd write them down. And I mean, this is in the 90s. So we, I think CDs were like barely a new thing at that point. And I used to sell the tapes to my friends. Now I didn't make any money. I was like, you know, here's a bag of chips, you know, give me a fruit roll up, give me some gushers, right? And I'll give you a tape. And I don't know where I was getting the tapes from, but we just always had blank tapes sitting around. So I was like, oh, okay. So, and that was sort of my first taste of people will pay anything for anything, basically. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it's it's interesting because as soon I, I my mind went right back to myself being a kid and I just love seeing this and all of the obviously all of the testimonials and things, the Instagram DM at the bottom there, and then you in the dominoes outfit too, like classic. These are classic. Like I literally oh yeah, you did ask where all the photos come from. So I've got over 44,000 photos in my phone and then I've got like I don't even know how many in two separate Google drives because I've always like I've always been like a hoarder of everything <laughs> including any memories I will not delete like and I will just not delete anything oh it's gone off I can still hear you you there you know what happened there i was like ah yeah so i don't delete anything so that's why i've still got like every photo ever and the other side of it was when i first started a business a lot of people like you see posts and they're like oh people are claiming this but like they're all liars that like, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors so i keep receipts of absolutely everything like if i work i have a selfie if i did this i've got a screenshot like anything i say in my post i've got receipts that's awesome yeah, the swipe files, right? Mm. Every good creator has them. And it's, I, I think, with how good I am at 
wrangling data and like drawing insights from patterns and human psychology and all that stuff, I am terrible. I'm probably top like top five worst in the world at organizing my files and folders. <laughs> Cable management. You should see my desk right now. Like the cables are everywhere. If I wanted to move my mouse, I have like this much room right now to move my mouse and all this stuff. It's terrible. 44,000. Wait, hold on. Let's put a pin in that for a minute. Did you say 44,000 photos? We oh, thousand photos. My God. Do you have like the world's largest hard drive on your phone or what? So I've got to pay like 10 pounds a month to Apple iCloud for the moment. <laughs> like a limited amount of memory on your phone which if you download apps or whatever it has to go to your phone memory so i am constantly getting like the thing you've run out of memory you've run out of so i have to go through and deleting like screenshots and stuff that i don't need like if i've screenshotted quotes or whatever um and like memes that i've saved or like stuff like that so that stuff is starting to slowly be deleted purely because i'm being forced by apple but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny i um yeah and I, I remember when i was uh i think when i was first signing up for google photos i was because i have a couple years worth of photos in there it's really just so i can see my cat when he was younger i mean that's really the whole that's the whole deal right he's the most important thing but when i was signing up for it i remember being like oh yeah i'm on the free plan i, I won't run out of this and then you get to the end and you're like, well, I don't want to delete the 2000 photos in here. I might as well just buy the terabyte. And then the terabyte gets used up like, oh, my God. That's how they get you. Now, you know what? There's a good idea for a product. We should just start a straight up cloud where everyone runs out of information. <laughs> yeah, that's just such, such easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep going. Just keep keep buying. Keep keep scaling upward. Um, I did. Um, P cloud I would put like a lot of my photos in there but then it didn't do it properly so only half went in there so I quit that after a month and now I just keep getting notified by my phone I'm just kidding. <laughs> and you can't turn it off either um no. what would you say so I know you said you know coaching social media content sort of all of the the above right but what would you say is the most valuable service that you offer to your prospects or clients like what and you know valuable is kind of a subjective term what would you say is the most valuable in terms of return on investment for your customers what do you see as the most valuable ad that you give back to your business so i'd say the one-to-one -one coaching uh, because when we do the done for you like when we do the full management they get ROI, but they're not learning anything themselves. So they kind of become like reliant on me. Like if I if I do it one month, like they it ends. Um, so I would say like for Laurent Social, it was probably the one to one coaching because they level up in their sales, they level up in the marketing, they level up in their mindset, and that's usually the biggest thing. Like when people come to me, they're usually like already successful. Like they're making it can be anywhere in between like 1k to like what's the highest i don't know, like 20k plus already but they'll come to me with like a small problem that they just couldn't fix or like a small mm -hmm. mic gift, like to do with sales i had a client the other day and she she's good at what she does she's already making like between three to five k a month and she was like my service is brilliant i just don't know why i can't get any more sales and then i was like okay so I look over her platforms and I was like, how often are you like selling in your content and on your stories? And she was like, um, oh, you know, like once a week, I, feel, I just feel really icky. And I was like, there's the problem. I was like, <laughs> so, you know, mindset around sales and it's how often you're telling people like where to take the next step. I was like, you really got to lead people to where you want them to go. Because when you're on socials, you're not thinking like, oh yeah, I'm coming on here to buy usually. So I was like, that's the issue. And then that problem was solved really easily. So it's just, it's those little tweaks, but I find the best kind of ROI in terms of everything is usually coaching. Yeah, that's interesting. And do you find, 
do you find faster results for coaching or for done for you usually usually i'd say done for you because once i'm on an account and i'm doing it like it's not teaching someone and then they've got yeah. practice so as a rule done for you is definitely quicker um and if you've got like no interest in kind of learning it or you know you just want to sidebar that bit of your business then that's the best option to go down but some people do want to keep that control um or they haven't got the budget for like the full done for you so then coaching becomes the best option it's just everyone's different and they like everyone's in different situations and kind of wants different things for their business yeah and do you find that a lot of your um coaching clients so just some perspective for me so how i got into ghostwriting was because for years i've just helped coached people on their linkedin i used to do it for free for a while and they said i gotta start charging for this um so when i was doing just some one-on-one -on -one coaching i just kept getting the same damn response like ryan I, I would love to write all this content but you just do it for me i was like no I, you know i don't like writing for other people it's a lot of work you know it's a lot of research a lot of time that outside of just looking at a post you're like, oh, well, that's easy. Like anyone can do that. But there's hours of research and like just learning the industry jargon and who the key players are and all of that good stuff that goes into it, right? To immersing yourself. So eventually I said, after a couple of times, I said, this is a sign. I have to start this or maybe I should try starting the ghostwriting agency to sort of battle test my coaching frameworks and to see if my stuff actually works for other people. But I found that once I transitioned into the agency, the done for you thing, I realized that I, I love helping people. I love coaching people, but I hate meetings. Do you find that your time is better leveraged in done for you or less versus coaching? So I run my coaching differently to most other coaches. And this was on purpose for both myself and my clients. So I don't do one-to-one -one calls, like literally in nearly ever, um, unless I'm doing like an interview or like a networking call with someone that I've like really got to know and that I want to jump on with. Like calls for me, one are difficult because I'm never in the same place like for two days running. So I don't know where I'm going to be sitting. I don't know where I'm going to get Wi-Fi. Like, um, but yeah, so I design my coaching so that it fits better for me and my client in terms of. I find when I was being coached by other people, like when I first started, and I was jumping on like a one hour call a week, I'd feel like I needed to get everything into that call. And then I'd come off the call and I'd feel like, oh, I missed this or I didn't understand this. A majority of the time it wasn't recorded and given to me. So 90% of it was like forgotten from what I had like written down or whatever. So when I made my coaching this time around, I was like, I'm going to do it in a way that they have everything forever that they can contact me anytime they need, but they're not like stuck to a one hour call a week or a certain time place, blah, blah, blah. So all my coaching is done via WhatsApp. They can star mm. anything that they come back to. They've got access to it forever. And they can literally like voice note me or message me any time of the day um, that they need me. If they need a post review, they can send it there. It's like the easiest thing ever. And I find I literally nearly every single client says to me, they're like, I'm so grateful it's done this way like i way prefer mm. this to so yeah so it works better for me and for them so that's how i've always done it well not always done it but that's how i do it now since so it's almost like a uh sort of like a personalized group coaching or mixed i don't even want to say the word group personalized coaching slash cohorty thing i don't even know how to describe that but it's it's like a high leverage coaching business that's awesome yeah, so it's, it's still one to one. Like all my clients are one to one, and they've all got like their own chats. I don't run group coaching at the moment. Oh, okay. um, like group coaching, I used to do a lot more courses in my first coaching business, but this time I've really just like focused on a main one offer. I've got like a course coming soon, and I've got another collaborative service which is available if people come to me. But like the only thing I kind of promote at the moment really is my one to one coaching. Because I found in my first business, and I think a lot of people do this, is 
you kind of try and do everything at once you're like oh i should launch a course i should start a podcast i should do a email list i should do like a million different things and then nothing kind of works properly like you'll end up not sending one email because you're too busy this week or your podcast episodes are like one every three weeks like so I've, that's what i've done this time i've tried to really keep my adhd brain focused <laughs> on the one thing and anything else i add to the business i outsource so you've seen in my new banner so the banner's been changed but the email list hasn't been launched yet i will not be the one writing that email um i'm speaking to amy this week to sort that out she's going to be uh ghost writing that for me hopefully thanks um, um what else is there was one other thing that we're working on at the moment so i'm speaking to indiana this week she's a business manager and she's hopefully going to be coming in to kind of manage all the systems for the courses and everything else so i'm not launching anything else until there's someone else to do that work so i'm not overrunning myself and everything falls apart yeah do you use any um automations or like no code low code at all at the moment so i've just switched all my systems so i was using like typeform wix um calendly like a million different systems i've just switched them over to go high level i don't know if you've heard of that because it does like literally everything so i'm in the middle of doing that and automating as much as i can so the lead gen is kind of like way better because it comes through the form which is like on the linkedin and then it automatically comes into the lead thing and updates itself so that's a lot quicker than my old system of a google sheet <laughs> um so yeah that that's in the process but hopefully indiana is going to help with that as well yeah let me know how you like that i i've heard of go high level i heard a couple people were tinkering with it but I've never actually heard anyone who's just a full blown like fanboy or girl of it yet. I'm sure it will happen once, you know, people start using it for a year, et cetera. But um, yeah, let me know how you like it. Cause I'm, I've, yeah, I had to, I started off in Kajabi because I was like, uh, you know, if I ever sell something, they don't take anything from payment processing when they deposit. So they don't take a dollar, but it's like $200 a month. So I was like, ah, uh, you know, and then I split that. I got rid of Kajabi and I said, I'm just going to go newsletter, Calendly, you know, loom for any video recordings and try and keep it as dumbed down as simple as possible. Zapier, make for my automations, my email stuff, uh, funneling and all that. But I keep hearing about go high levels, like all in one solution for it. So yeah, keep me posted on that. I'm, I'm curious to see more about how that works for you. <clears throat> I like it so far. I think when you first switch everything over, because you literally, like I had to switch it was probably about seven plus systems because i was setting up my newsletter on beehive like calendly type form wix for the landing pages what well, these i definitely missing things but the switch over and like learning the system is a bit of a ball lake or can i say that is difficult <laughs> I don't know if I'm um but it's hard at first to get to know the system it is like it's not ideal like when you go on some systems it'll give you like video tutorials of each thing it doesn't really do that and they just keep offering you like a kickoff call where you jump on a zoom with like a bunch of other people so i was like yeah no i'd rather just figure it out myself yeah. but when i started like understanding the platform and knowing how to use it like i love it already i've already like mm. said but if you're using 15 systems you need to go because it's cheaper as well like, i think i pay 80 uk pounds i think it's like 97 dollars um, yeah. yeah so i think it's like that much per month but when i take off what i was paying for like type form calendly wix blah 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 blah, like it it will be less Especially type form is expensive i was shocked at tight how expensive a form is because google forms you know microsoft forms it's all free just not as pretty you know or customizable unless you know code but it's like damn typeform is expensive as hell i know we use we use typeform for um snma and these the clients that we run these for are bringing in like hundreds of leads a day like for the the company that they run so our typeform bill 
has just like increased like so many times <laughs> and like the email comes through and looks like are they actually being for real i'm like we need to switch to go high level <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. So, so wait, does t t Typeform charges like kind of like ConvertKit, like the amount of subscribers? Is it the amount of actual submissions, form submissions that you need per month? Oh, yeah. I think it's leads because, like, obviously he deals with that like side of it. So I only see the emails that come in that are saying, like, yeah, you need to like stop paying more. So I think you must get a set amount of lead forms filled out and then you have to pay more um because i started with when i started Lauren social i started with type form and i think i was you're out like 10 a month for free and then you gotta start paying um and i yeah. i in the first week like, i was over that and i was like all oh, right great so i was and that was the one thing i did not like paying for but i couldn't switch to something that was free because like you said it's not as pretty like the type yeah. form it is pretty and it's like you click through it and when i was switching over to go high level like i've customized the form but it isn't as pretty as type form so i was i'm in an r and i was like do i keep my type form but i was like no was like you're not paying just for something to look pretty <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i mean i just did a breakdown on justin welsh's stuff and you know when you're making four million dollars a year you can pay to have someone make things look pretty you know but i mean his free landing page to his free newsletter is like the best looking landing page i've ever seen like i wonder how much this cost but then again he's probably making you know one to three dollars per newsletter sub every month so who knows yeah i mean that's something that's with my mindset because no matter how much money i earn i am still like very tight in my own head like i will still yeah. Yeah. I can. So maybe like maybe I'll go over that one day, but yeah, for now. All right, so we got we got a few minutes left. So I'm gonna do the questions from the audience. Questions from the followers. Let's find a good one here. We talked about systems. Talked about it. Let's see here. <laughs> Did you ever think about renting out your kidneys for money? That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At one point. Uh, okay, here's a good one. Coldeep Guerra, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If you had to pick, who is the Ringo star of LinkedIn creators? First of all, who is Ringo star? <laughs> First off, if you don't know who Ringo star is, he's one of the Beatles. No? Oh my gosh. Okay, so, so wait, do you know who the band The Beatles are? I've heard of like The Beatles, but okay. it's not an EDM. Okay. So, all right, let's <laughs> let's reframe the question. Who is your favorite all-time rock and roll band? Rock and roll band? No idea. I don't listen to like rock and roll. Damn. So what do you listen to? What who's your favorite musician? Period. I listen so my favorite musician is Timmy Trumper and he's a DJ. Like I only listen to like EDM DJ type okay. stuff. Okay. So who is the uh yeah, I'm trying to think it. Who is the Cascade or the um Steve Aoki or who is that of LinkedIn? Who is like the OG all time on LinkedIn? Now you speak in my language. Um <laughs> oh. Like the first, the, I think whenever you speak to pretty much any creator, the first three people that come into your head at the moment is like Jasmine, Lara, Luke, like them, them three, like they kind of like own LinkedIn at the moment. And then you've got people like Justin Welsh, who's massive, um, oh, Jason, why is my memory so bad? There's a, there's a guy called Jason, he's massive as well, and I can't remember his last name. But like okay. for me, I'm not the type of person that, solely follows one person and like the like the guru of linkedin like i i speak to so many different people that i don't i just can't like pick one i don't know i can't pick favorites <laughs> so okay so who uh, here's a better way to, to frame the question who is someone that you will i mean because we all do this right when we're engaging we'll skim a post for people to try and get through it who is one person you will sit down and be like 
I'm got I gotta I want to read this entire thing consistently. Um so usually mainly like the people that I'm close with through LinkedIn. So the people I've like become friends with, I'm like the biggest hype girl. So I like read their entire posts like thoroughly, be in the comments, leave the paragraph, like that's that's so it's like Bethany Dukes, um hmm. Emma um Nader Allen. Um, I'm definitely gonna miss people here and they're gonna be in the group chat like <laughs> but yeah, like it's mainly like my my course for people I'm like hyping up because we're just so like we're so close, we speak every day. Um and like we're on the same journey as well. So I do relate to their content a lot. Like I'll read this stuff and it does genuinely help because they're facing like similar problems to me because we're all in similar phases of our business. So yeah, yeah my, my the the posts that I read most. And then okay. obviously, the, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So this one, I mean, you talk about a lot in your content as well. And then you prefaced it in our little coffee chat we had before we clicked record, but how do you juggle work demands and personal lives, especially when the workload piles up without letting your health take a back seat? Cry daily. <laughs> <laughs> because in my first business i run myself like i was ill i was really really ill and i stopped like running the business for a short while and um so this time i've made sure that like i will not over i will not take on too many clients so that i feel like i'm i'm doing too much um if a client isn't a good they know whereas in my first business i would just be like yeah, yeah yeah to try and hit the next income goal i did a post about that the other day actually like i don't even work towards income goals anymore because as soon as you could like trying to focus on i want to make 10k this month you start saying yes to things that are going to drive you nuts and like i rather my sanity like <laughs> every day of the week um so yeah i guess it's having boundaries automating systemizing where you can which i'm in the middle of doing now and outsourcing anything that's not your um like outsourcing anything that's not your zone of genius or that you don't enjoy so like i my accounting's outsourced as part of my business is soon to be outsourced the email newsletter like i haven't even launched that until i knew it was outsourced mm. so yeah that's my advice systemize mm. outsource boundaries that's a good one. And I I am not someone to ask that question to because how do I say this? I work all the time. <laughs> okay. I still work all the time. I don't do any work anymore that like stresses me to the point that I hate my business. Yes. So like from the minute I get up to the minute I go to sleep, which I pretty much do, is stuff that I like. So it doesn't like drag me down. I think people get burnt out when they're doing stuff they don't enjoy all the time. Yeah, or doing stuff that they think they should be doing, right? Beating yourself up. Oh, I should be doing this, should be doing that. Should. I do that all the time. And I'll do it with the dumbest shit too, like little things. And then I have to step back and be like, I just got to go for a walk. I didn't get the hell out of the house or, you know, stop staring at a computer screen and just go defrag for a minute, you know? Yeah, that's one thing I live by, like, since that first period where I pretty much had a fully mental breakdown, <laughs> is, like, sometimes the most productive thing you can do is take a break. Because mm -hmm. I, I am forced, like, if I couldn't figure something out or if I wanted to create content, I'd sit there and force and force and force it all day. Whereas if I just went and did something for, like, an hour, I'd probably come back and be able to do it. So that's another thing I learned the hard way. I feel like I've learned yep. everything. It's a good way to learn though. You'll never forget it. <laughs> All right, we got time. We got last question. Now I asked Dina this as well. And I'll probably, it's such a good question. Thank you, Welly, for asking this question. Welly's the man. I'll probably ask everyone because I know why I collectively, I know how, sorry, let me rephrase this. I knew my strategy going into messaging people that I've never met and who are so far ahead of me in terms of LinkedIn and their business. I knew how to approach the message from a psychological standpoint. And Dina, I asked the same question. So I'll ask you, what was the one thing that Ryan said that had that 
had them agreeing to do an interview with him. So what was from a psychological perspective, like what made you say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm down for that? I don't know. Like I just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if someone is like you, you said about doing the race to 10K and everything else. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just not going to say like, no, I feel mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very simple answer. I love that. So, okay, I'll just ask you. I'll keep asking you stuff then. <laughs> well, yeah, I just. You know what? I have like in some ways, like I've I've learned to have like boundaries and not being a people pleaser so much. But yeah. like, if, if I can help someone, or if someone is genuinely like working at something and I I can help and they ask me to, like, I will help. Um, just, I don't know. That's just the way I am. I guess that's why I coach people. <laughs> it's in my DNA. I was just about to say, it's probably why you've been so uber successful is because mm -hmm. when you just genuinely want to help people, like it leaks out of you. It just, people feel that energy. That was one of the reasons why I was so drawn to your content is because I don't, so I use, I don't know if you can see on the share, you can't see on the share, but I use this little Chrome plugin called feed blocker. So whenever I sign on to LinkedIn, my feed is blank. I don't want to get sucked into it. I don't want to see the news or the courses on the sidebar and all of that. So when I actually physically engage on someone's content, it's because they've made an impression upon me enough to where I, I add them to my daily list or my list of people to just go back and check and engage and, you know, draw a community from. And when I first, well, first off, your branding immediately hit me right and then the second part was the consistency of genuine content that you put out i was like this dummy just needs more followers period like she needs hundreds of thousands of followers because her stuff is fantastic so whenever you are that way whenever you are yourself especially on social i think people and especially creators people see enough content that at their third eye immediately goes, I've seen this before, it's copied and pasted, it's not generic, it's not you, it has no relation to your brand or business. Like the disconnect is always there. You're always looking for it. And when you see someone who's genuine like yourself in your posts, it just pops off the screen. So for me, asking you, it was just a natural progression from commenting, you know, almost every day in your stuff to, oh, I, I would love to sit down and interview this person, you know? Thank you. I like, I don't, I couldn't be anything other than myself. Like, I used to try and be more professional. I used to wear like a blazer. I, I, was, I just can't. And that's just me. Like, I speak how I speak. I, and that's just how I've been on LinkedIn. And I think I don't like the, the advice of like sharing templates and hooks and things like that because you do just see the same kind of content like all of the time and i'm the same as you like i only really like to read now content that i know is real is like coming from that person like they're sharing stories like i don't really even read like tips tricks and stuff anymore because we're like when you're in the linkedin bubble you just get sick of it i think <laughs> like you just get yeah. beyond and how much how-to content can you consume before it all just becomes pointless to you? You know, like, that's why I don't even, I stop doing like the how-to, you know, daily, weekly, whatever it is. Every once in a while, I'll throw out something like that. But um, it's stories. It's people relating to people. It's here's what I learned from this experience, you know, so you don't have to, like you said, learning the hard way sharing that with other people and it's also tapping into the the drive of your audience like what what really do people want what are people craving for when they step onto this platform do they want more work content do they want more professional hr speak no like they're trying to escape that by logging on during their work day when they should be working right so Understanding, I think that is uh, is the key to being as genuine as humanly possible with your words online. But yeah, I've had an absolute blast talking to you today, and it's probably the best way to start off my Friday. So thank you very much for your time, Demi. I really appreciate it.
Thank you. I've had I've had a good time too. And like thank you for asking me. Like I was quite nervous before I came on here because you were like hey, <laughs> thousand interviews and I was like, Oh god, now you've asked a little <laughs> God help. But yeah, no, it's, it's actually been really good. Well, I appreciate you. And for everyone who is listening, watching, following along, where can they find you? Um, so mainly on LinkedIn under Demi Naran. Um and yeah, like LinkedIn's become my bubble now. Like there will be a news that are coming soon. I will be on Instagram soon, but that is where that is where everything is at the moment. Nice. Yeah. So for everyone, I will drop Demi's links for LinkedIn. And then by the time this gets launched, probably Instagram, right? The newsletter, all of that good stuff. So I'll drop all of those links in the description below. But we appreciate you, Demi. Thank you again so much for your time. And we'll catch everybody on the flip side. Okay, Dokie. All right, let me turn off the recording.